G'day, I'm Jesse Crow, the Travelling Scientist, and today I'm going to be talking about how the brain works. What do we know and what don't we know? Hold your two fists clenched and together, like this. That's about the size of your brain, and it weighs between one and two kilograms, and it contains around a hundred billion nerve cells. But how does our brain work? I mean, what's going on in there? How does it use the information to not only keep our bodies alive, but to allow our bodies to do such amazing things? Well, let's look at the brain carefully. Now, it can be divided up into three main areas. The brainstem, the cerebellum, and the cerebrum. And each of these areas can be subdivided into smaller areas, which all have specific functions. Now, I just want to clarify that this is going to be a super simplified overview of how the brain works. I mean, it's not brain surgery. Well, it kind of is, but whatever. The brainstem, also known as reptilian brain, is essential for basic survival. It's responsible for autonomic functions, that is, the stuff that your body does automatically. It controls your breathing, your heart rate, blood pressure, hunger, thirst, and fundamental emotions like happiness, sadness, fear, love, and hate. The brainstem has three main areas, the pons, the mandula oblongata, and the midbrain. The pons is involved in regulating breathing, and it controls involuntary actions, including facial expressions, posture, salivation, chewing, swallowing, and even crying. It's also responsible for sensations like touch, taste, and pain. The medulla oblongata sits right at the top of the spinal cord and the bottom of the brain, and it's responsible for heart and blood vessel control, digestion, and also breathing. It really relays nerve signals between the spinal cord and the rest of the brain, so it's responsible for coordinating body movements and regulating your mood. The midbrain, also called mesencephalon, serves important functions in motor movement, particularly movements of the eye. So those three sections make up the brainstem, and most of its functions are automatic. It does basic things to keep our bodies alive. But looking beyond the brainstem, we look towards the cerebellum. The cerebellum's function is to coordinate muscle movement, to maintain posture and coordination, balance, and even speech. Essentially, it's responsible for smooth and controlled movements of your body. So the brainstem and the cerebellum are the more basic lower level sections of the brain that work to keep our bodies moving and keep us alive. Whoa! But looking toward the cerebrum, this is where things get a little bit more complicated but a lot more interesting. And the cerebrum is split into several different sections, each responsible for its own functions throughout the body. Let's start with the hypothalamus. This connects the nervous system to the endocrine or hormonal system by taking in information and manipulating the pituitary gland just below it. The pituitary gland sits just below the hypothalamus and secretes hormones to control processes like growth, blood pressure, temperature regulation, and water balance. The thalamus is the gateway to the higher brain. Sensors like sight, taste, hearing, touch, and smell pass through the thalamus and get directed to specific regions in the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the outermost layer of the brain, and it's where our most complex thinking and processing happens. It's usually split up into four main sections, or lobes. The frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for your personality. Things like complex emotions, decision making, social behavior, and even the way you speak. This area really makes us who we are. It's also partially responsible for our voluntary muscle movement. So if you decide to stand up, your frontal lobe made that decision and sent a signal down to your legs. The parietal lobe sits behind the frontal lobe and integrates sensory information like vision, hearing, and touch, and it allows your body to understand and respond appropriately to this information. It's also responsible for your spatial awareness and navigation, where you are in the world. So if you easily get lost, your parietal lobe is probably broken. Just kidding. Some people are naturally better at navigating, while others are naturally better at just getting lost. 
The temporal lobe is on the sides of your brain and it's responsible for processing sensory input and making sense of words and combining them with what we see to understand conversations and enjoy music. It also contains the hippocampus which is responsible for learning and memory formation. So when we're listening to something interesting like some juicy gossip, a good story or the travelling scientist for example, our temporal lobe will comprehend that noise and store it as a memory for later. The amygdala is right beside the hippocampus, so it's involved in memory formation, but it's also largely responsible for emotional responses like fear, anxiety, and aggression. The occipital lobe sits right at the back of the brain and is our main visual processing center. Everything we see with our eyes is sent to the occipital lobe and it works with other parts of the brain to create the image that we see and understand what is happening around us. There is so much to learn about the brain. It's our most complex organ and there's so much that we don't know about it. We don't understand how our brains recognize people's faces or how it recreates images from memories. I mean, we don't understand what part of the brain houses our mind or our understanding or our creativity. We don't even know why we need to sleep or how we fall asleep or why we dream, or if animals dream. I mean, we don't even understand what consciousness really is. And these are the kind of questions that scientists are trying to answer in 2019. And it's really important to find these answers, and anybody could find these answers any day now. It could even be you. But it probably won't be. It's probably gonna be a neuroscientist that's been researching these questions for years, and if that is you, then why the hell are you watching this basic ass video? Get back in your lab and do some more research. What, do you think I was just gonna give you the answers? Get out of here. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button down below, and if you have any questions about the brain, let us know in the comment section down below. Finally, make sure you subscribe for more Traveling Science every single week, Next week's video is going to be all about living longer and the science behind that. So uh, that's next Science Sunday. I'll see you guys then. Cheers. <laughs>